there's been a fair bit of discussion, conversation, and I think justifiable concern over Bill C-11, an act to amend the Broadcasting Act here in Canada. So today on Don't Talk TV, I want to have a look at that act to try to help viewers understand what exactly it will potentially do and what stage of becoming law it's at. Hello, my name is Nicholas Wansbutter. I'm a lawyer in Stratford, Ontario, Canada, and welcome to Don't Talk TV. So most viewers are no doubt aware of a bill that was introduced in February of 2022, about a year ago in the House of Commons, called C-11, and it's an act to amend the Broadcasting Act. It recently completed its process through the Senate. And there were some news articles about that, but I want to take a look at the act itself and, uh, and, uh, and its progress and it's through the two houses of our parliament to give you an idea of where it is and what exactly it does or what it might do and what concerns I have and others might have about it. So first of all, I want to take a look at the Parliament of Canada website, parl.ca, at the Legis Info section on C11. So as indicated, it's C11, an act to amend the Broadcasting Act and to make related and consequential amendments to other acts, also called the Online Streaming Act. Mostly it deals with the Broadcasting Act. So as we can see, it completed first reading February 2nd of 2022, made it through to third reading in the House of Commons June of 2022. So it went through a Senate pre-study and later in the next day, starting the next day, June 2022, did a first reading. Then we see there's a, this whole section of things not completed. That's because there were some significant amendments made. So then what was considered in second reading was this amended version of the bill. That took until October for them to bring that about. And then it was February the 2nd of 2023 where it completed third reading. Now, because of the nature of the amendments made by the Senate, it now has to go back to the House of Commons for the House of Commons to approve it. So as we can see, the current status is that it's at consideration in the House of Commons of amendments made by the Senate. So it's not law yet. Maybe the House of Commons, the Liberal NDP coalition, won't like the amendments that were made by the Senate, and they'll uh, reject those amendments and things will be delayed yet further. So we'll, we'll have to see. As to the text of the bill itself, I have that here. So this is the version that was passed and went back to the House of Commons. One of the main changes that they made is in the definition section of the Broadcasting Act by creating a new form of programming and a new form of undertaking. What we now have is an online undertaking, which means an undertaking for the transmission or retransmission of programs over the internet for reception by the public by means of broadcasting receiving apparatus. If we take a quick look at the Broadcasting Act, that's where broadcasting receiving apparatus is defined. Since that's not changed, you don't see it in C11. So that means a device or combination of devices intended for or capable of being used for the reception of broadcasting. So it's a pretty broad definition. I think it would clearly capture computers. Going back to C11, let's see what some of the things are that are changed that will encapsulate the online aspect. So. It does exclude certain things. An online undertaking that provides a social media service does not, for the purposes of this act, exercising programming control. So this exempts the owners of YouTube, the owners of BitChute, the owners of Rumble from any kind of sanction of this because they do not have, they're not considered to have programming control over the th things that are being broadcast on their platform. There's also an exclusion for, a, it says a person does not carry on an online undertaking for the purposes of this act. A, that is ancillary to a business not primarily engaged in the transmission of programs to the public, and that is intended to provide clients with information or services directly related to that business. So that's nice for Don't Talk TV. That clearly exempts Don't Talk TV because this is in relation to my law business and the primary purpose of Don't Talk TV is to provide people with information about the law. 
videos that are part of the operations of a primary secondary school are exempt, as are the operations of a theater, concert hall, or other venue. Now, I think part of the problem is that it's only a business that is exempted here, not private individuals who are sharing their opinions, although perhaps one could maybe stretch the definition of business to say that one is just carrying on business if they're uh, running a podcast or a vlog. Now, here is an interesting bit of uh, verbiage, which time will tell how much how that holds up or how that is taken in courts. It says this act shall be construed and applied in a manner that is consistent with the freedom of expression and journalistic, creative and programming independence enjoyed by broadcasting undertakings. Now, that's interesting because it's only what's enjoyed by broadcasting undertakings, not what's enjoyed by the average Canadian citizen. That may prove to be problematic because, as I understand it, it seems that the traditional mainstream media don't have a whole lot of freedom. They have a a certain line that must be held. Now, there's mention here that foreign online undertakings shall make the greatest practicable use of Canadian creative and other human resources and shall contribute to an equitable manner to strongly support the creation, production, and presentation of Canadian programming. That I could see being used to shut down things like RT in Canada or maybe InfoWars. Also, online undertakings shall clearly promote and recommend Canadian programming. Now, that said, you're not able to control what shows up on the recommendations on the sidebar on YouTube, for example, so I'm not exactly sure how this one will play out. Now, here's one that is probably the most helpful. Section 4.1 sub 1 of the Broadcasting Act is now including this exemption that this act does not apply in respect of a program that is uploaded to an online undertaking that provides a social media service by user of the service for transmission over the internet. So there's a specific exemption for uploading to social media sites. And again, I take it that not just Facebook or Twitter would be exempted, but also things like YouTube, BitChute, Rumble, Odyssey, etc. So that's actually a good section that's in there. My con- my concern overall with this is that the mere fact that the inter- internet is starting to be regulated, that's the thin edge of the wedge or the, the door being open a crack that will allow it to be pushed open wider down the road. I think C11 itself, in and of itself, doesn't appear to be particularly nefarious, but it's what it will lead to down the road. And also the fact that there are certain ambiguities as we've seen, This seems to be a recurring theme in legislation written by the Liberal Party of Canada that I've seen over the last several years is things worded in a vague fashion, which then leaves the door open to interpreting it in different ways down the road, depending on what they want to do. So I think that's another danger in this act. So it's more what the act doesn't do that I think is problematic or what it may allow for in the future versus what it does itself right now. Although that said, I again reiterate that it's not law yet. It has to go through the House of Commons again. It may have to go through the Senate again, depending on what the House does. If they change things in a significant way, as I understand it, it'll then again have to go back to the Senate for for their approval. And that ping pong ball could get bounced back and forth all the way to the 2025 election, depending on how committed the Liberal Party and the NDP are to the original version of C11. So it's certainly something worth keeping an eye on, uh, but as of right now, it's not exactly a panic situation. So this video is not legal advice. If you need legal advice, call a lawyer. You can call another lawyer or myself. My website and phone number are listed below. Again, I'm always open to uh, recommendations, topics that you'd like to see me cover. Uh, so please send an email to the email address listed below or leave a comment in the comment section. And if you found this video at all interesting, helpful, or informative, please consider liking, sharing, subscribing, and following us on social media.